Okay, this video is about Ratkin. <coughs> well, first off, um, let's say outright, if you're running a Guru-based Chronicle, Ratkin probably won't work very well in it as player characters at all. Maybe if it's a Bonar-only campaign, or if it's a very city-based campaign and you want a lot of antagonism, um, you have to understand the Ratkin. The Ratkin were put on, I mean, their purpose was to defend the wild. And, for lack of a better term, they failed at that. The Guru didn't call the humans very well. And as such, uh, the Raki kind of lost their way. When the Concord was reached and the Imperium was lifted, they viewed as the ultimate betrayal. And when the War of Rage hit, um, they were, you know, they were hit real hard. Um, their version of Galliards and their Bards were pretty much wiped out. Uh, but not before laying out a curse uh, upon the Guru in general and all of their enemies. They retreated. Uh, a lot of them retreated into the Umbra. A lot of them retreated to the fringes of society. Unfortunately, that took them to the fringe of their sanity. And now, this the insanity kind of permeates the culture much in the same way as it does for Silverfang. They no longer seem to follow their purpose. I mean, you'll see some some uh, twinges of it, but for the most part, they are about surviving, breeding because it's sacred to them, um, and honing their strength, being prepared so that when the apocalypse does occur, that they are going to be able to influence the result. Now, in what way? That's unclear. They don't seem to have that purpose anymore. It's almost like they have a plan, but they have no goal. Um, it, it just it marks the insanity, and the insanity permeates everything. Now, if you have to make the characters, uh, it's kind of simple. You have to realize they're not born like Guru. They, if you're a kinfolk of them, you, you're you know you might be born with the ability to be a radkin. You have to be kind of infected into it. Um, they have three breeds, uh, Hamid, Metis, and then their version of Lupus, which is called Rodins. And then they have, they don't really have the tribe so much, they just kind of have kind of auspice and tribe all in one. Um, you've got the Tunnel Runners, which are their scouts, their spies, their messengers. You've got the Shadow Seers, which are their version of Theurge, uh, the Mystics, they deal mainly with the Umbra, and Spirit World, and... Human Madness. Um, knife Skulkers. Um, they're the... Uh, they're the assassins who meet out justice uh, in all its forms. They're kind of like the Philodox, uh, although a better equation would be the uh, Judges of Doom from the Shadow Lords. The Warriors, which are their version of the Avrun. Then you got the Engineers. Uh, the engineers are kind of like their glass walkers. They've, they're using the weaver against the weaver. They've learned how to embrace the ways of the weaver in order to combat it. Plague lords. Uh, kind of throwback in a way. Um, their method for destroying order is through destruction uh, via disease. And they are very... I don't know, they're almost evil in a way. They're almost like Black Spiral Dancer Theurgis. Uh, they are the basis for great storylines. Then you got your Munchausen. Uh, they are the only thing that are even close to being Galliard for them now, the bars, because they're almost all uh, liberal travelers. And um, they're almost all pretty much insane. But the reason is because they're the curse coming back. They're, they're some of those uh, Ratkin that uh, journeyed off into the spirit realms to hide and stayed there. And when they were brought back, the infection pretty much made them flesh and blood again, which created these Munchausen. Munchmausen. I always pronounce it wrong. Then you have Twitchers. Uh, Twitchers are like Anarchs, I guess you'd say. Um... They're all about just wholesale destruction, death, 
I mean, it's like they've embraced the rage and they've let it take control. Okay. Those are some of the keys there. Now, of course, each have their own gifts, their own rights, and you would do just like standard character creation. You'd play with that. Um, you have to make sure you look because there are some uh, merits and flaws that are unique to the Ratkin. Um, there are also some backgrounds you have to look at that are unique to them, uh, such as Colony. Um, means basically you're on good terms with the guardians of a, of a Ratkin sacred site. Um, the number of points in it usually reflects the uh, the population of rats, rat spirits, kinfolk, and rat kin living there. Uh, if they're pl somebody playing a menace, has to have at least one dot in the colony. Um, another new one is freak factor. Basically, you're a genetic abnormality, a rare aspect of rat kin who doesn't quite fit into where rat society. Um, if you're playing the freak aspect, you must purchase this trait. You know, Twitchers have to have, like, level 3. Uh, engineers and Plaguers must have 4. Munchausen must have 5. Uh, they're all considered to be the new types. Uh, plague. Um, you've got a, a local, or allies in a local rat family um, who are willing to help you out. Uh, but they demand help in return. Plague is, like, the equivalent of allies, but they're all rats. I mean, those are some of the new ones that they use, and you got to you got to understand how to use them as well. Uh, Ratkin society is something unto itself. I mean, they use different terms. Um, they gather in rat packs. When you get a number of, then you get you know, their their uh, sacred sites are called nests. You get a number of nests together. They call themselves a tribe, which is nothing like a guru tribe. Um, <coughs> colonies used <coughs> I mean you got you'd have to look up their lexicon and use it to some degree because their 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 lingo is going to be slightly off slightly different than a gurus will be now that's all about making them and such how do you use them well the best use of them is by the staff uh, they're gonna make they make great antagonists um, not so much protagonists, but they can be occasional. They make a great gray area type NPC. Um, a darkening gray area, because they're closer to the black than they are to the white. Now, I have used them several times. Um, I have a group of them that are involved in my Chronicle. They are based in Jacksonville, Florida, the city itself, and there they serve the city father as well as the, the you know the rat, their aspect of rat, which is the rat god, and they do their part. I mean, they're they're I'm not going to get too much into it because my players are going to see this, and I don't want them to figure them out too much. Um, I've used them on occasion because of the Bonar having rat kin allies, so I've used some of them. That is a generic way to use them, in my opinion, though. Because they don't really have the personality, because they're not supposed to. They're not supposed to be something that's going to become in-depth. They're just great uh, storyline vehicles. Now, the biggest use I ever made of them was when I was a member of uh, the Green Nation. I wrote a storyline uh, based on the Plague Lords. Basically, um, a specific Plague Lord believed he had become the avatar of the Rat God... And he managed to find an unworm tainted plague from way back in the day and tried to corrupt it himself and basically unleashed a plan where it, he infected a bunch of Asian black rats with the septicemic plague, um, which was empowered by basically the spirit of septicemia. And these rats were spread throughout the United States. Um, they, because of the plague, they were very aggressive, they were very dominant, and they basically started to kill and take over the Norwegian Browns. And the plague started to spread. This was supposed to lead to the Guru having to 
immerse themselves in the fringes of Radkin society and to realize that there is a big difference between the number of the Radkin and their beliefs and the fact that the you know the plague lords are these outside factor the types of rats is essential to the way that you know a lot of these people you know think and it was hopefully going to lead to them having to try to close the gap between them and the ratkin by freeing them from the plague lord slash asiatic rat menace that was pushing them back towards war with the guru which goes against their very tenets of survival it didn't work that way because well it was the organization I was a part of was not a very cohesive unit and a number of storytellers refused to run stuff the other ones ran it their own way and in the end it pretty much ended up with a lot of Radkin getting killed not a good thing um, now the Radkin are rebuilding their forces basically they're going to be ready for the apocalypse if you really read it they've got pocket realms out in the umber where there's you know they call them paradise realms where there's probably there's tons of rats, rat spirits, and rat kin that are just kind of biding their time. In all of their ins insanity, they're waiting for the apocalypse to happen. They believe we're in the winter of that, that it's coming close. So it, it is very appropriate to have more and more of them venturing out and running across the group's path or foiling them or whatever it may be. I mean, you could, you could actually write an entire um, chronicle based on rack and aggression and you know their twisted belief that the end of the world's coming and that they're going to affect it but not knowing how it is i mean it could make for major philosophical differences it's it's a great use the other thing is don't ever if you're going to play the rack and yes they do have some insanity involved but don't play them stupid i've seen too many times they're played stupid they're very cunning creatures they may not always be book smart intelligent but they are street smart intelligent and you got to realize, even the ones that live in the city, for the most part, they hate living there. They hate being forced to live around humanity because they would prefer to destroy it. They do it out of necessity and the fact that they consider it sacred that they survive and they breed. And they make themselves stronger. So that's why they won't go out and wholesale kill anybody because they're not going to draw the attention that's going to kill them. And it's one of the most misplayed things ever. Now I know I'm probably missing a number of aspects and... There's all kinds of, you know, lexicon I could probably still talk about. But, um, that's my take on the Ratkin. I mean, they're very interesting. I'd almost, I mean, I would I would actually, I wouldn't mind playing in a chronicle that was, it was a small chronicle. Like maybe uh, five to ten players. It was based all around Ratkin itself. But, for the most part, most of the people that I'm reaching out to are the ones who run Guru Chronicles and as such they don't really work as player characters they work better as non-player characters and a canny staff can make them into something brilliant whether it becomes um, that blood you know that blood chilling nemesis or that door you don't want to open you know you got to make a deal with them but you know it's going to burn you to the mystery that just leaves people scratching their heads any one of them can be, you know, can be utilized with the Radkin. It's really the challenge of the staff to make it work. So, I think I'm going to wrap it on that. Um, I'm sure I'll get some comments if I forgot anything, because I do have a couple of my players, at least, who are obsessed with the Radkin. So, okay, that's it, guys. Peace out.